And welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart a Lenovo Yoga 730-13 IKB. And this is the 81CT variant. It is a 13.3 inch 2-in-1 convertible laptop. And to begin we're going to need a small Torx bit. This is a T5. And just be advised, we're going to be leaving the LCD as a complete unit. We're not going to be taking apart the LCD, and you kind of don't want to anyways. So um, more on that later, but we're going to just leave this complete, but we're going to take apart um, you know, the insides, RAM, whatever else is inside there, and leave the palm rest as a complete unit with the touchpad and the keyboard. Um, so to get started, we're just going to flip the laptop over. And we're going to go along and remove all of these little torque screws. All right, once you get those Torx T5 screws out, we're going to separate the bottom cover off of the palm rest. And I found the easiest way to do this is to kind of use the hinge as a, a fulcrum. And then once you get a little bit of a gap up in the corner, um, you can use your tool or what else you have to uh, just start popping it up and working your way around. And once you have you know like half of it up or at least a, a big corner, uh, you can just get your fingers under there and finish popping it off like that. All right, so let's take a look what we got inside. Um, looks like the rest of the fasteners inside are a small Phillips bit. So we're gonna switch to our 2.5 Phillips. And uh, generally the first thing we wanna do for disassembling is to disconnect the battery and remove it. But if you're just gonna re be replacing your Wi-Fi card or your SSD, uh, just as long as you don't drop something metal and touch any of those contacts together, you should be fine. But um, just as best practice, we'll go ahead and remove the battery. This looks like there's just the four screws. And the connector. Uh, you basically just use your fingernails to grab the, the tabs here on that black connector from the battery and just kind of wiggle it backwards out of the slot so it'll go laterally. That's how you remove the battery. All right, so we'll flip it around and uh, next thing we're going to remove is the SSD drive. So they put a little sticker over it, but that's a Phillips bit underneath, so you can either remove the sticker or just poke the screwdriver through it. And once you get that screw out, you can just wiggle that SSD out of there. And this is an NVMe M2 SSD uh, 2280. So that's going to be the size you need if you want to upgrade or replace your SSD. It's an NVMe 2280. All right, so we'll go for the Wi-Fi card now. Take off the tape. Uh, just pop those antennas up and off with your fingernail and remove the screw. And then you can wiggle that card out. All right, so we'll take a look now. Um, underneath the cover here is the integrated RAM. So just be advised that if you have this particular model, uh, the RAM is not upgradable. It looks like it's all integrated into the motherboard. And so I guess now we can go ahead and remove the fans and heatsink. And they do kind of look connected here. Uh, so for the fan connector, uh, both share the same type. You just flip up on that little retainer pull the ribbon out, and then it's best to flip it back down so it, less chance of it getting broken. And then we'll go ahead and remove the screws from this fan and we'll see if we can remove it 
independent of the heat sink. Nope, they are attached. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the other screws for the fan and then the four screws for the heat sink and just remove it all as an assembly. And oftentimes what they do is uh, just add a lot of tape on the top and bottom so that they do stick together really well and seal the air. Um, but it just makes it to where you can't replace a single fan or your fans without having to remove your heat sink and reinstalling with new thermal paste and all that. So um, it's definitely more convenient if you can remove the fans on their own, but it's not like that on this model. And on the heat sink, there are, uh, they're labeled one through four. Uh, when you re-tighten the heat sink down with new thermal paste, tighten in the order that's stamped. Um, usually goes in like a Z or an N pattern to tighten that uh, thermal paste down evenly. But as far as removal, it doesn't matter. All right, so just get a fingernail underneath that heat sink and wiggle it a little bit to overcome the thermal paste. Um, and then you can remove it from the laptop. And it does look like it's just uh, a little bit of tape on the top and bottom side that are holding that fan in place. Um, but I think it would be pretty impossible to remove that without damaging your heat sink. So you'll have to remove the fans and heat sink as an assembly. All right, so let's look at, see where we're at. Um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the motherboard and remove it. But if you are just uh, swapping out your LCD, um, as long as you have the cables that are coming from the LCD loose, uh, you should be able to remove the display assembly without having to take out the motherboard. I do see one maybe problem with that and that's this antenna right here. Um, it's routed underneath the motherboard. So you could probably maybe wiggle it out from underneath, um, but it does look like they want you to remove the motherboard before you can uh, replace the LCD. But we'll go ahead and disconnect the rest of the LCD. Uh, the video cable here just has a small bit of uh, plastic loop here, and that's to help you pull up and pull that connector off. And I like to put my finger right next to it on the motherboard um, to keep it from flexing because uh, sometimes it takes quite a bit of force to pop that connector off and this was the same. It took quite a bit of pulling to pop that connector off of there. So um, it's best to kind of reinforce it with your finger so you don't uh, bend your motherboard too much. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's, most uh, most laptops you can get away with. Yeah, I think you can on this one. So if you pull the that antenna from underneath the motherboard, then it looks like you can. Uh, once you have these cables disconnected from the motherboard, all you'll have to do is remove those hinge screws, and then you can separate the display off of the palm rest. So just keep that in mind uh, if you're replacing your display. Uh, it looks to be pretty easy, and that's all you really need to do is remove the cables on the motherboard, remove the hinge screws, and then you want to make sure that the, the case is open before you disconnect the last screws on the display assembly. Because if you remove them right here, you're not going to be able to separate the two pieces. The hinges are kind of folded over the palm rest. Um, but we'll go in more into that in a couple minutes after we remove the motherboard. So I think what we'll do now, um, we can go ahead and just start removing all of the ribbons and cables that are connected to the motherboard. And we'll start with the speaker. Simple type, just wiggle it out using the tabs. And we have a little bit of tape here. So it looks like for all of these bottom ribbons, they all have the same type of retainer. Just flip it up. And then you can pull those ribbons free. Some of them do have notches on either end, so you have to lift the ribbon up as well as pull it outwards. And we'll go ahead and flip those retainers back down after we remove the ribbon. Quick look. All 
right, so it looks like we can go ahead and remove the motherboard screws. I do see that they've used a smaller type screw for the little, uh, little bracket here, so I'm gonna remove that first. And I have switched to a 1.5 Phillips. Alright, so I got that little bracket. Um, may or may not need to be removed, but we'll take it off anyways. Alright, so switching back to the 2.5, we're going to go ahead, okay, I see what's going on here too. Um, it does look like you absolutely have to remove the motherboard to get the display off. I do see now that there is a tab um, underneath this hinge that's directly underneath the motherboard. So if I'm, we'll see once we get it off, but I'm pretty sure that um, that hinge is not going to come up and off until the motherboard is removed. Flip around to the other side, and it looks like we just have a few more to take off, and then we can remove that motherboard. All right, so when you go to remove the motherboard, uh, just pay attention to any ports that may be sticking through the palm rest. Um, that way you don't break anything as you're trying to pry the motherboard up off and you can see which side of the motherboard you're supposed to lift up on um, which is the side that does not have any ports poking through uh, which is going to be this side and then we'll just give it some gentle uh, wiggling And then once you uh, get it free from the palm rest, we'll just slowly flip it over. Make sure there's nothing connected to the bottom side. And that is how you remove the motherboard. Okay, so we see here um, on both sides, the hinges they've extended underneath the motherboard. So uh, forget what I said earlier, you definitely need to go through all that to remove your display, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And it's not really that hard on this model. Um, basically using just three different tools to take apart most of the laptop. So now we can disconnect the display uh, from the palm rest. So of course we have those cables free. We have the display assembly open and we've made sure that those hinges don't have anything else covering them. So we can go ahead and remove the hinge screws. It's, it's actually a lot easier to, to remove the screen on some of these two-in-ones uh, because you, you are able to open up the laptop all the way so it lays flat like that. Um, a lot of the other models that aren't two-in-ones you have to kind of support it underneath because it's in the shape of like a TP. Um, and then when you go to remove the hinge screws you have to kind of hold it so you don't break anything. Alright, so we've got those hinge screws out and we can go ahead and just pull those, make sure that the cables will come out freely. And then we can remove the display from the palm rest. Okay, so let's see what we have. Uh, the keyboard, let's see if that's replaceable. back the uh, backlight cover. Okay, so I do see a lot of tiny Phillips head screws um, that are holding the keyboard in, so the keyboard is replaceable independent of the palm rest. Uh, it's just gonna be a ton of Phillips head screws all the way through it, but you can replace the keyboard if you need to without having to replace the palm rest as an, as an assembly, um, which like so many new laptops are like that. It'll just have plastic rivets holding in the backing plate um, which usually means you have to replace it as an assembly. 
And same goes for the touch pad. We got some Phillips head screws and it looks like the touch pad will come right out. Speakers are just held on by some rubber grommets. And uh, your fingerprint reader, um, same deal. It's just held on with some Phillips head screws. So that is it for the palm rest. All right, back to the display. So um, on the yogas, the you know since it's a slim uh, touch screen, uh, a lot of times the digitizer and the screen are going to be mated together with some pretty strong adhesive, and um, so basically you just need to separate the two halves. And if you're trying to replace the screen by itself, it's going to be real difficult. You're going to need a heat gun and a lot of patience to separate it from the digitizer. So on the Yoga series and most other slimline laptops, um, I would definitely uh, recommend replacing it as an assembly instead of trying to fight with this thing and get it open. Um, everything removed without breaking it, it's just, it's very, very difficult. So if you want a more stress-free and easier, quicker way to replace your screen, uh, just buy the complete assembly and you should be able to find one like on eBay or Amazon. So that is basically it. That is how you disassemble Lenovo Yoga 730 13 IKB, 13.3 uh, inch two-in-one laptop. And if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.